Try it. All right, try it again. Hey, y'all. Hey, Erica and Jason. We <laughs> can't. Jason with Time to Shrink, and it's time to... Drink! Yay! Here we go, right. We struggle with this intro, hey. y'all. Today, we are doing... I feel like I need to have my girlfriends here. Today is kind of... <laughs> There's a girlfriend. And here's my girlfriend. Hi, Hazel. She always wants to be on camera, y'all, even though she has a very sad little haircut. <laughs> it's hot in the South. Anyways, today we are doing all things pink. Well, not all things pink, because I have more pink drinks in our coming cookbook. But today we're gonna do the Cosmopolitan. Y'all have been yelling and screaming and asking for the Cosmopolitan. So we have our version of a Cosmopolitan. With the history you. lesson. We are also going to make a blackberry gin and tonic, but it actually kind of looks a little pinky purple. So we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, it definitely it looks pink after you add all the ingredients. Yeah, plus it's a very girly drink. Pink. Gin and tonic is definitely more of a woman's drink in general. I'm not saying you guys can't have it, but more often I hear requests for gin and tonics from girls. And if you didn't know this, tonic is full of sugar. Oh, yeah. I have actually had a handful of clients that said, well, all I drink when I go out is gin and tonic <laughs> and it kicks me out of ketosis. Yeah. Uh, and they yeah. really thought they were making yeah. the right decision. Tonic. But tonic is like... 30 grams of carbs, right. y'all. So there is a such thing as diet tonic water. So there's a tip if you're out and want a G&T, diet. And then the other thing we're gonna make is the Manhattan. It also has a really pretty reddish pink color, but we are putting an Erica's twist on it. So we're calling it the Manhattan-ish. My forte is not naming drinks, y'all. <laughs> but I'm pretty good at creating them. Yeah, we okay, were. let's just jump into it. We are not, usually we kind of pick one alcohol and that's what we do, but Whoa, we are all over right. the place tonight. The theme is pink and cute and pretty. I'm wearing pink. I'm wearing, I'm wearing pink. as much pink as I have. He's I'm got pink. You. Sticking to a theme. All right, here we go. We love our themes. <laughs> so what we got in our Cosmopolitan? Okay, Cosmopolitan is an ounce and a half of vodka. All right. This is a shaken drink. So all right. you're going to take your Boston shaker. You're going to put an ounce of triple sec. Half an ounce of lime juice. Right. Half an ounce, you're gonna go with the juices first, right? You go with half an ounce of lime juice. Half this is fresh squeezed lime juice. We say it all the time. Makes a huge difference. Don't use the bottle crap. Yeah, it really makes a huge Get difference. Get away with the lemon, y'all. but not the lime. Half an ounce of diet cranberry juice. Diet cranberry, we got ocean spray diet cranberry. I'm guessing this is zero car, or this is 0.3 Okay. You can also get a five calorie diet cranberry. Some people think that one tastes a little bit better. They're about the same to me. Okay. And then you are going to add one ounce of triple sec. Here's another thing that you can't really make this drink if you don't have a low carb triple sec because triple sec is full of sugar, y'all. And full we've got sugar. low carb triple sec recipe for you in the cookbook being released any we day do. now. Not any day now, but soon. A couple weeks, y'all. Uh, when y'all are seeing this, any day be, now. When y'all are seeing this, it should be one more week. We are planning to come out with it August 21st, I think is what it is. We'll see. We're in we're in the edit phase. All right, we're good enough. Okay, now you need one and a half ounces of vodka. Oh, in a Cosmopolitan, you usually rim with an orange twist. I'm not really sure why, because there's no orange in the drink, but that's just typically what they use. Oh, triple sec is orange. Triple sec is orange. I like to use my little handheld peeler and just peel one off. And then, if you want to make it really pretty, what you can do, this is what I do. Take my peel and I roll it up. Now here, you could stop here, put a toothpick through it, and it, looks, and it looks like a rose. Like, how pretty. Or, you can take it and cut it on both sides just to make it even, just for prettier presentation. So, I'm going to get rid of those. Unroll it, and then you just kind of twist. And with that fresh, twisted orange, you want to go around your chilled glass. This glass had a bunch of ice in it, so it's nice and chilled. And then you can either put it on the side pretty or you could just drop it down in there. So this is your standard low carb cosmopolitan. You can take it one extra step. We have another recipe in our book for grenadine. Grenadine is also full of sugar. We have a really, really good grenadine. And some people put a splash of grenadine right on the top of this when they serve it. 
So I'm gonna try it first and then we'll put that on it. Let's see. All right, the Cosmopolitan. Now I think the Cosmopolitan is super, super popular because if you're- You're cutting my history lesson here. Okay, you wanna do yours first? Sure, okay. of course, the history of the Cosmopolitan became very well known and you know, all the way back in 1989, when an aspiring young columnist named Terry Bradshaw made it very popular on Sex and the City. Other than that, there's not a ton That's of your history. History. That's my history. He's there's so proud of himself. <laughs> Here, I thought he was going to come out with all this history, and then I'm going to be like, Sex and the City. And there he goes and steals my thunder. Obviously, I think we all love Cosmos because of Carrie Bradshaw, right? Sex and the City. I mean, what woman hasn't watched that 50 million times? And that's why you go order a Cosmo. Oh, probably the last time I ordered a Cosmo. Oh, was yeah. Like oh, 20 it? years ago. Oh, when absolutely. That was super popular. Oh, absolutely. Didn't even like them, probably. I actually like this one. Do now. you? Yeah. I never liked Cosmos at the bar. But you ordered them. I totally ordered them because I wanted to look cool. <laughs> but I did not like them. And I promise this is my first set. I am not drunk. I feel like sometimes I'll watch these and think that girl is wasted all the time. All the time. But we just have fun, y'all. That was literally the first sip. We, we just have fun. It's a lot of fun. And I'm surprised that I like this. It's good. It's good. Well, we I've take made the extra this, steps, you know. I've made this probably five or six times now to get it right because this is in our cookbook, y'all. We just showed you how to do it, but also in our cookbook. The key to the cookbook the is key. definitely not the recipes. It's getting the low carb. Syrups. Syrups and ingredients right. that you need to put yeah. into I these mean, cocktails. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of really inventive cocktails that oh, I yeah. think you will really like. We also have some of the standard favorites, but we have low carb them, yes. keto fied them, whatever you want to say. I have kind of perfected the syrup recipe. I have made so many syrups in this lab that we're standing in, and the syrups, also we have some rapid infusions that I'm going to teach you how to do in the book. Also, we have like some liqueurs that we've made low carb, specifically triple sec, because most of the drinks that I love have triple sec and I couldn't have them. Or if I had one, it was like my whole 20 carbs for the day. So this Cosmopolitan at the bar is usually between 12 and 15 carbs, depending on how they make it. Yeah. I've looked it up a bunch of different ways. That seems to be the average. How much cranberry juice, how much grenadine they put in this it? This is 1.5 carbs, 1.5 y'all. So, drink up. So, what are we making next? We will stay in the family and make the Manhattan Manhattan ish. -ish. Next. Okay. We'll move our whole. So, the Manhattan is not crazy full of carbs regularly. It is 10 carbs. Now, for me, that's too much because if I'm out with my friends or if I have my friends over, I'm going to have two drinks. I'm, I am. Like, I'm not having one. Whatever. I, I know he was doing that. I didn't see it, but I have a feeling he's like five. Or no, 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 no. Did you say three? Three. <laughs> Anyways, who has one drink is basically what I wanted to say. Manhattan ish. Now, this is going to be a rye whiskey drink. Right. We're using bullet rye whiskey. I like bullet. It's good quality. Again, go with pricing, whatever but... you like. You don't have to use a rye whiskey even, although it kind of changes the drink. Yeah. I would encourage I would rye. encourage a rye. So you're going to do two ounces of rye whiskey and one ounce of dry vermouth. Yeah. Now, the vermouth is where you're getting your calories for this drink, not your calories. Your we'll carbs calories for this drink. Well, yeah, there's calories, but the carbs for this drink are around between three and three to three and a half because the syrups sometimes have a tiny bit. Some of the syrups that I make are zero carb or equal to zero carb because I use allulose. The cherry syrup is a thicker, like think maraschino cherry type syrup. So I have to do a little bit more work to make it super, super strong and super thick. And one of my tricks in that is using stir water enhancers and those do have a carb per squeeze. So that's how between that and the vermouth, dry vermouth does have a little bit of carbs. So for one ounce, it's three grams of carbs for the dry vermouth. And then the cherry has, a, oh, there's your spoon. The cherry has a little bit. Okay, so two ounces of rye, one ounce of dry vermouth, five dashes of Angostura bitters, and two bar spoons of cherry syrup. Often when you serve drinks that have bitters, you make the drink first and then you just put the bitters over the top, but not with this one because we have something extra special to go on the top of this. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you can use whatever kind of bitters you like. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be, um, doesn't have to be a, use what you like. 
bitters wise. But this is a, a great bitter to start with. And if it's you easy wanted, to find. It's easy, very easy to find. It's very inexpensive. And again, if you do, versatile, it's it's definitely you should have it in your yeah. bar. If you do buy our book, in the very front of the book, I go through all of our ingredients that we use, all of our equipment that we use, and give you links to everything. Just to make it super simple. And there's also going to be a video of our tips and tricks and bar recommendations. You said I never smile. That's a fake. It's supposed to be authentic. I'm so happy to be taking this drink for her. I am just going to give this beautiful smile. Or you could give the cheese ball of the century smile like you just did now. You're going to strain this no ice needed in here. Then Erica's going to tell you about the finishing okay. touch we've got. There. I would probably pop a cherry in this. Don't eat it because you're going to get more carbs. Oh, but just, yeah. for, just for presentation, I would totally pop a cherry in this. But pop a cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I probably think I'm yeah, better. Two or three of them. Get two or three of these in the bar. You'll be it. <laughs> Inappropriate, Erica. Okay. So I got to reel it back in. What are we doing? Okay. Secret, secret, okay. secret weapon. So here. the secret weapon, the secret like specialty ingredient to this is absinthe. And you're not pouring absinthe in, you're going to spritz it. So this is like. Truthfully, it's a water spritzer or a perfume, perfume spritzer. spritzer it's easier. actually sold for like doing like orchids or things because oh, yeah, you just yeah, yeah. spritz the water. But I thought it was really pretty and would be perfect for this. And it pressurizes when you pump it. So you only need, I literally didn't even buy a bottle it's of absence. Bottle. I bought a mini bottle in here and it's still pretty full because a spritz is not much. Anyways, so you're going to spritz it once or twice just like that and it just goes right across the top of the drink it smells so good oh my gosh absinthe this is my drink i had no clue what absinthe was or what it i had heard of it but always just the rumors absinthe is like a licorice taste and i don't think that i or i thought mm. i didn't like licorice but on this drink so good. it is so good and it takes it to the next level. You don't have to do the absinthe spritz, but a mini bottle of absinthe is super cheap. This was like, I don't know, $10. Again, it's linked in the cookbook if you get that. You smell the licorice mm -hmm. right before you, no, it's Before so you sip, your, your nose is hit with that licorice. Then you take a sip and you get a little bit really of licorice enjoyable. and then all of the drink through it. This is a super, super enjoyable drink. And if you make this like at a party, it's like a party trick if you have this. People just will love it. So super easy and absence is zero carbs. So anyways. That's the Manhattan-ish. That's the Manhattan-ish. So the cherry pop. The cherry pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Last one is, a bump, 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 I don't remember. Blackberry oh, gin yeah. and tonic. Blackberry gin and tonic. I feel like the gin and tonic is a very like girly drink. I don't know a lot of men who love gin and tonics. I know a ton of Southern women, a Southern grandmas, Southern mamas, like all of my friends, Southern mamas, favorite drink in the summer, like out on the boat was a gin and tonic. My best friend growing up, her mama always had a gin and tonic when we were out on the boat, like for an evening ride, just a little stroll. And like, it makes me yeah. think of her every single time I make a gin and tonic. Gin and tonic's a manly drink. You really, I think it's it really is. It's really not. You don't think so? No. The we history. know a lot of men that drink gin and tonic. Well, the history of it is. I don't know man. the history of it. I don't know. I know that Miss Suzanne always drank these. Gin and tonic was made popular, obviously, by the British. And because they love their gin. Oh yeah, y'all remember the British story? And if not, I'll link it up above. Go watch that. That, was it the daiquiris? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, we're British uh, imperialism, trying to build the Panama Canal, which they failed at doing, by the way. A lot of malaria. And so it was believed that gin and tonic was a cure for malaria. So they, they drank I thought lot. it was for scurvy. No, that's, that was well, the, the lime. Yeah, I mean, the sailors, they would, you know, mix anything with their lime. Sorry. but. My, the, my sailors would get their, the sailors would get their rum rations. Oh, the sailors did rum. Right, and right. And the other... And this is... This is gin. This is gin. I'm getting right, it confused. Right. right. But yeah, same idea. Because so, I don't really care. <laughs> so gin and tonic, uh, very popular. Maybe the reason the British were unable to finish the Panama Canal. All right, so we're going to make a blackberry one. And there's 
you know, you can do all kinds of variations on the gin and tonic, but the key to the gin and tonic is like the gin. Like people right. like that, like bitter, that botanical, like, yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. Standard gin and tonic is like Tangeray or Bombay, like a very juniper forward yeah. or English Blue type. Sapphire. Yeah, English bee, type bee gin. Or something like that. The gin so. that we're using. Hi, oh, baby. Hey, so you Hi. Like Would you, you like, like a drink? This is our blackberry simple syrup. We're going to use just a little bit because we want to get the flavor, but we don't want to cut the bitterness of the gin or the tonic too much. We're going to do a whole ounce of the blackberry <laughs> simple syrup. That's what you meant. And again, this recipe is in the cookbook, how to infuse these simple syrups right. with the berries. Yeah, like the thing with gin and tonic, if you want, if you're out at a restaurant and you love gin and tonic, just ask for a gin and diet and you're good, you're zero carbs. What we've done is make some variations with some of our really fun syrups. You could do a lavender, you could do a hibiscus, you could do a blackberry, you could do a peach. Like it goes on and on and on what you can create if you make your own syrups at home. And if you want to even go lazy version, you could use like skinny syrups of different flavors in this. I find it makes a huge difference in taste if you make your own and I'll teach you how to do that in the book. But so what he has here, he's two ounces of gin, an ounce of syrup, and then you're going to do four ounces of tonic. You build this in a highball glass, which basically is just a tall glass, any tall glass that you would like to use. We have some that we inherited from Jason's daddy that have our initials on them. So that's what we're using as our highball glass. But I also have highball glasses linked in our cookbook at the very top. And we'll talk about them in the video as well. And what? we like to stir our gin instead of shake it. There's a reason for it. You don't need to know it. Why do they not even know it? If you're... I don't know. Just do it. The reason for it is it. gin, like wine, when you shake it or leave it open too long, it is, gets aerated, it gets oxygenated, and then all the different specific botanical notes can disappear. That's the theory. Yeah, see, I told you you didn't even know it. Just shake it. Just don't shake it. Just do it because Jason said so. Whatever. Yeah. Also, we didn't talk about why we picked this gin for this drink, which I thought was actually really cool. This is infused with persimmon and elderflower. So it's not just like a juniper straightforward. It's got other really good- it's got some personality. Yeah, it's got some personality. And I'm obsessed with elderflower. You know that like St. Germain's elderflower? It's so carb heavy. And I have been not been able to find elderflowers anywhere, like organic edible that I could make my own syrup with. But if you can, elderflower syrup would be really cool too. Are we done? Oh yeah, done. you're just telling stories and waiting I'm to telling stories. with the okay. blackberry. I was gonna put one in the bottom. A spear. I don't oh, know well. if it'll go down. There, there. You go. there we go. Here we go. This is how I would serve it, just with some blackberries across the top. See, it's pink. Black, it is pink. It That's goes four ounces of thing. tonic water, by the way. Four ounces of tonic water. Kind of goes with it. And blackberries are relatively low carb. So if you want to eat them, so you can either do it like this, serve it like this, or you can just kind of float it in the drink like that. Whatever you want to do. I would probably eat the blackberries because I love blackberries, but this is zero carbs. This is a zero carb drink. Yeah. If I mean, you don't count the all allulose, technically is what I use in my syrups. Technically allulose has carbs, but it has zero blood sugar response, zero glycemic index. So I count it as zero. And you might point, pick up 0.2 of a carb with the simple syrup. We don't, mm. we don't really know. But I don't, yeah. One thing about simple syrups and mixers and livers and infusions is unless you have a literal chemistry lab, you cannot you measure the exact amount. Like I'm giving you educated guesses. If you need it to be exact, and you happen to be like you a chemistry a oh, student. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you need it to be exact, find yourself a chemistry student friend or a professor, and they'll probably go like chemistry people would go really bonkers for this. They love to do this kind of stuff. So just find you a friend less, if you really less care. Less than one carb for this trip. But though. this is zero carbs unless you eat the blackberries, and then what? I'm probably like two because it has fiber. I don't know. Again. Blackberry gin and tonic. You could make a hibiscus gin and tonic. You could make a lavender gin and tonic. You could make a peach. You could make a raspberry. I and mean, it goes on and on and on. And I'm could, talking too much. My camera man is squeeze, going. You could get, you add a squeeze of lime to. You could add a. 
<laughs> Never mind. Never mind. He means you could add a little bit of lime. You could, yeah. My pink raspberry gin and tonic. This one is not in my book. My pink raspberry gin and tonic in the book, I do add some lime juice to. So if you're interested in that one, buy the book. <laughs> plug, 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 plug. Plug, plug. Mm -hmm. Buy the book, $17. And you're gonna get video education with it as well. There's a book, there's a PDF, there's videos talking about our tips and tricks and what we like most and how to do infusions and how to do how to do syrups and all of that stuff. I walk you through it. MySouthernKetoKitchen.com. MySouthernKetoKitchen.com, that's where you get it. Also y'all, one more thing. A bunch of people have been asking me about our shirts and I bought them really just for us to have shirts, but I do have Teespring and I just found out that apparently I can add a Teespring store to my YouTube channel, which I did not know. So if you want a Hey Y'all Hey shirt or a Time to Shrink shirt, we have a few on there. I'm working on some other stuff. I really want to make a who time knew? to drink. I mean, who knew that people Yeah, would want to buy I didn't it. know people would want to buy it, but I've got a lot of interest. Hey, so y'all hey is fun, though. Hey, y'all hey is fun, right? Time to drink you don't have fun. to be interested in me or my channel to want to wear a hey, y'all hey shirt. But I want to make a time to drink shirt. I want to make like a mug. I even have socks, y'all. Click the link. Check out the Teesprings. This store and, really um, was just my daughter playing around. She was just creating different stuff. So if you're interested, you can check that out. If not, that won't hurt her feelings either because really we just did it for fun yeah. for us. And I just think it's really cute because I say this all the time outside of this channel too. So anyways, that really went down a tangent. Oh my gosh, you drank all of that. We've been on the air for a while. Well, I was going to hold up the three drinks and show y'all, <laughs> but Jason somehow in the last minute of me talking has downed that drink. So, gin and tonic, Cosmo. What used to be the Manhattan-ish. Manhattan-ish. Cheers, y'all. All really, really pretty, cute drinks. Cheers, y'all. Bye, be blessed. <laughs> I guess it's time to go. <laughs>